Greetings and salutations to all you folks out there. It is the weekend. It's been an incredibly hectic week, at least on my end. Crazy stuff going on at work. Very, very busy, but it is finally time when we can put down all of our stuff chillax to the max and just do nothing for a couple of days at least if you're not in a in a uh, service industry to those of you working in restaurants in the service inter industry and merchandising i do feel sorry for you guys i did that for a couple of years and i so did terribly miss my weekends but i have them once again that is beside the point though before i can relax i need to get you guys a cast and i do have one for you it is between ta for life and mr aesthetic uh, this is Seraphim on the northern side versus UEF on the south. Should be a good, solid land match. This is a map called Dry Canyon, and it's a little bit of an odd orientation. You can see, I think this is uh, 5K or 10K tall. It may be some odd number, like 8K tall and 3K wide or something like that. It is a very oddly shaped map, but it does play well. I've cast it a couple of times on this. It's got some scattered about reclaim in some strange places. It has very spread out mass extractors that encourages expansion and rewards raiding. And it's got this canyon in the middle where I've seen a couple of games end where somebody got their ACU stuck in the canyon and got units on both ends and just could not escape without dying. So this is going to be some interesting gameplay we see here. Got two good players hopefully we will see some amazing moves. I'm going to go ahead and bump up the speed here and jump straight in. TA, as mentioned, is Seraphim. He's going mostly Engineers. Got a couple of Selens down here and one tank out to guard the pass. On the southern side, Mr. Aesthetic already got two land factories up. Building tanks got scouts out. There's a snoop up north that is going to flee away from that Tham, trying not to die. Looks like we've got... Fourth air for TA and third air for Mr. Aesthetic. Kind of odd builds for these guys. You usually see air earlier than that, but uh, I had a cast the other day that was this way where air did not show up till much later in the game. And it looks like we're going to have another one like that. Now, TA got his factories online far quicker than Mr. Aesthetic did. TA has 800 reclaim and very good looking eco. Mr. Aesthetic underbuilt power a bit. He's going to have to build power very quickly or he's going to stall. I think that is pushing out that scout and two interceptors very quickly. TA is pushing out one interceptor and Mr. Aesthetic is going to drop in the score there. Let's see. Yes, TA is actually sitting very pretty on his eco. Mr. Aesthetic is having a little bit more issues, but he did stay balanced, did not stall. Kudos to him for that. Got a run by over here. Not going to get extremely far. Ran his ACU up the front. Going to kill the Hydra. That is actually going to do a significant amount of damage to TA. In the early stages of the game, when you're factory building, power is absolutely critical. Well, it's critical any point, but even more so at the very beginning. And we're seeing a very long extension of the commander here. Uh, looks like both players have one interceptor. Not a whole lot of danger in the air. But TA for Life is going to be able to push a whole lot of tanks down towards the southern side here. We do have some troops moving in to intercept. And Mr. Aesthetic is about to start laying down some damage on the home base of TA. He's going to be... Uh, gonna need to be very careful about where he sticks his commander here got engineers coming up building tech one point defense aesthetic of course does not have any ACU upgrades it does not have overcharge TA does have overcharge and he's headed back up north that is yes mr. aesthetic is very wisely retreating I commend him for not going any further in that endeavor because I think it would have led to his very early demise Right at 8 minutes is not the time you want to be dying on a map this size. We've got T2 on the way for Mr. Aesthetic. Not for TA that I can see. Ah, oh, no, I'm lying. There it is right there. Had my mouse over it and did not see it. Il First Ilshiva is about to roll out up there. And uh, already got two, two, three pillars online. 
And we've got some nasty Thans running around in the back here. There's no defenses, so he's going to have to do something about that. Beautiful run by up here on the north, killing these mass extractors. This is what I was talking about with this map. The way it's laid out strongly encourages raiding. And I love action-packed games like this. I hate playing them. I can't stand dealing with harassment. It works way too well on me. When you harass me, it gets me annoyed, I make mistakes, I screw up, and overall I'm not a very effective player once that starts happening. But it is awesome to watch other people as they engage and play like this. Mr. Aesthetic is doing a brilliant job of poking and prodding and just in general being a royal thorn in the side of TA for life. And this, uh, these two Thams are actually still alive back there. TA did kill off a couple of things with them and is going to camp out. You can see getting an engineer kill there and camping out in the back to pop up later when Mr. Aesthetic least expects it to kill something off that he did so dearly love. We've got two, three pillars on the left side. Got a tech two point defense going down from a Sparky, the brilliant little Sparky special unit of the UEF. Those are very underutilized, but we're actually seeing them right now. Have a riot cannon with approximately half the DPS of a tank that can fire while it's building. It can defend itself from a couple of Tech 1 units pretty effectively and build a point defense at the same time. So very handy dandy unit. Also has the radar jammer packed into it. Okay, Mr. Aesthetic pointing out that TA for Life has four HQs, which he does. TA for Life burned a whole lot of mass on that one. Not sure what the point of that was. Probably a misclick. As I'm sure most of you know, the NG mod that was integrated many patches ago, all of you have played with it, all of you should know what is going on with it. Uh, introduce the support factory. So the support factories are basically cheap build power once you have already built an HQ. Uh, it didn't break anything in the game. The HQ is the original cost and build power of the factory pre-patch. So if you want to build HQs in a system with Tech 1 engineers, you can play the same way you already did. But uh, building the support factories instead of additional Tech 1 engineers to assist your original land factories resolves a whole lot of pathfinding issues that this game had. It makes spamming higher tier units very practical. Leads to some pretty epic land battles as I'm sure you guys have seen. Got, We're building up towards a critical mass of Ilshivas here in the center. Ilshivas are one of those very nasty units kind of like Percivals and Bricks where once you get a certain amount of them in one spot it is incredibly hard to overcome them. The only uh, the thing that really shreds groups like this is an ACU with overcharge or tech 3 mobile artillery because that is going to have the splash damage and the punch behind it to really start eliminating a lot of those units and we did see a gun upgrade started over here for Mr. Aesthetic that is going to help him out on the right side. We've got a, yeah that is a TND got a point defense sparky and a couple of tanks on the right but the left side there are more units flowing towards the right for mr. aesthetic not now that this group has come down here but there have been but you got to remember that pillars are cheaper than Ilshiva's. there is a higher mass concentration in TA for life's group number for number than mr. aesthetic and one Ilshiva will always kill one pillar as it should because it costs more so you're going to have to really watch out in situations like this that you don't miscalculate how many units you have and what you need to roll over the other player. Ilshivas are very nasty beasts. They have long range and high damage. And you do not want to mess with them. Mr. Aesthetic diving right into TA for life's commander that is gun upgrade versus gun upgrade. Both of them backed by tech 2 units. You're going to see a little bit of a duel going on over here while these units are fainting. Um, there is Tech 3 on the field. Finally, there is a Percival out for Mr. Aesthetic. 18 minutes, T3 rolling out. Of course, T3 is not going to be quite as effective for Seraphim as it is for UEF. Although the sniper bots are nasty critters. You definitely do not want to leave your ACU within reach of a couple of those. Those two Percivals are going to be able to press forward a little bit and start laying down some fire 
on those Ilshivas from well out of range. That is going to eliminate the range advantage that those T2 units had. As long as he can keep them protected and not let the Percivals get swarmed, he should be completely fine. Uh, got Mobile Flak in place. That is good. TA for life is still chugging right along. We've got Tech 3 going down. That is 80% on the upgrade. 45 eco for both. Looks like TA has much more power on hand. 12k reclaim for TA, 4k, almost 5k for aesthetic. So TA for life has a stronger eco at the moment, but he did burn off a lot of mass in these extra HQs, and both players are on T3. So right now it's anybody's game. We've got roughly 50-50 map control, though I will say Mr. Aesthetic is being a little bit slower to rebuild his mass extractors than TA is. We've got what Tech 3 is coming out first. We've got the Awful Awthums. Let's take a look at the terrain here. This is a pretty flat map, so unless you really get unlucky and decide to fire across one of these little random bumps in the ground, you should be completely fine using the Awthums. The only situation, the only bad part of that situation is going to be the range issue because the Percivals are going to heavily outrange the Othams. If you kite a little bit, maybe have a mobile shield or two to help you out, the Percivals are going to handily own their mass in Othams. The advantage to the Othams, and a lot of people don't realize this, the Otham is the highest damage Tech 3 unit for mass, um, uh, as far as the Tech 3 assault tanks go. The disadvantage is, as before mentioned it's short range relatively short range and also it has it's very low to the ground so it has major issues with terrain so I, I don't know it's kind of a cheese unit either it works really really well and it kills everything on hand and you kind of have to use it as a swarming unit or it fails totally miserably so uh, I don't know you can go either way I, I personally dislike them because they don't fit my play style Got a lot of Tech 1 bombers in play. You guys could see them flowing down from TA, and now it looks like Mr. Aesthetic has built some of his own, and he's laying down some fire on these artillery. Artillery is going to be zapped by those Percivals as they're marching from north. We've got, uh, let's see, 5, 6, 7, and some T3 artillery headed up. Got a raid running by, but that's not going to get very far. Going to kill a couple of minor structures and then get wiped out look at we've got a pause on these factories what is TA doing he is getting a tech 2 gen online as quickly as he possibly can was one of those kills did a t2 gen go down I'm not sure maybe TA reclaimed some of his tech 1 power I think that's what it was or that was killed by some units I missed it I'm sorry guys it was probably kills due to the inconsistent I don't know, it could have been reclaim and he just misclicked and didn't reclaim a couple of them. Regardless, there's now a T2, two T2 gens online for TA, and he is back online with his production. So he fixed the power stall problem, and now he is pumping away at those units. That sounded kind of wrong, but moving on. Let's see, Mr. Aesthetic is slowly regaining map control, and he's pushed now. Looks like we've got about 60% of the map in his hands, and he's also been raiding at TA's mechs. We've got about a 10 mass advantage to Mr. Aesthetic. Mr. Aesthetic owns the air, but there is a substantial amount of flak for both players, so I don't think uh, the interceptors are really for truly intercepting. They're not actually projecting any air control because there's so much flak. You don't want to use them unless you're specifically chasing down a target that you have to kill. You got this Percival run by on the side. Oh my! 300! Dodge! Dodge! Holy cow! TA dodging Percival's. That was insane. I cannot believe he didn't die. 15, 1600 health now. He is safe. And that was a whole lot of Percivals that died to those Othams because they were focus fired on TA. That is going to introduce some serious problems to Mr. Aesthetic. Uh, one more landed shot. Any one of those four or five that TA dodged. My 
goodness, that was lucky. Yeah, TA claiming it was luck. Mr. Aesthetic saying, I thought for sure you were dead. That is the truth. TA, by all right, should have died to that. And now, Mr. Aesthetic is going to have to flee the Othams. He's overcharging like his life depends on it, because it does. He's going to kill and kill Vet. And he may actually pull out 2,000 health. And he's clear with the help of some Percivals. As long as it's Otham, yeah, he's going to take care of that easily. And another group of Percivals moving north. That was two failed T3 attempts on an ACU. And the play has shifted back and forth again. We're now about even. Small number of Percivals, small number of Othams. Percivals are going to win this one, of course, because they have the superior range. But there is a sniper bot in the back somewhere, right there, laying down a little bit of fire on those Percivals. Whew. That was a bit intense. That is a whole lot of luck and a whole lot of skill involved in that situation. Both of those should have resulted in a death. But thank goodness for careful micro and strategic overcharges. All right, we've got Tech 3 Mobile Shields online. That is a very handy tool that the Seraphim does have at its disposal. You can see the huge radius on that shield, and those will be able to cover a large number of units. You pair those with Sniper Bots versus the Percivals, and you can actually do really well for yourself. Uh, sneaky Artillery, going to take down that Tech 2 Mass Extractor. The Tech 3 Shield also acts as a buffer to allow the Tech 3 tanks to get within range. They do have that shorter range, and that is something that you need to exploit to overcome that disadvantage. You got Tech 3 Mobile Shield moving out this way as well. Those little guys have 10,000 health apiece, and they are extremely, extremely useful. The only problem with them is that they do suck down a lot of power. And that is something the TA for life is having trouble sparing at the moment. The shields are going to go down. The power flux is not a good thing. Looks like he's getting an upgrade, possibly brass. I'm not 100% sure on that. No. He already has. It looks like... Uh, no, he does have brass. It looks like he does have brass. Probably got first RAS and is going second RAS. Let's go ahead and check in on this. No, he has a TAC pack, but he's getting a different upgrade. We'll have to check back in with him and see what that was. Let's see. We've got a lot of air for TA. Not a whole lot going on up here. Still collecting Tech 3 units out of his, uh, ah, now he has support factories, good deal. Finally overcame that mistake. We've got another Tech 3 support down here, so two factories producing for Mr. Aesthetic. And the Percivals are gonna face off against these Othams. Kiting to the max, brilliant micro there. I'm gonna really put some hurt down on these units. You can see when the Percivals strike with that huge alpha damage, the tanks die, and that decreases the damage potential of the entire group. Percivals are very excellent tools for taking out groups of units like this, but there's just so many Othams. There we go. Percivals win, as they should, trying to kite away, but the Othams were able to catch up and kill quite a few of them. Well, I say quite a few, three or four. Um, but the Percivals are going to win that, and TA backing up kept the tack launcher and that is between the snipers and the ASCU and everything else moving forward he was able to finally clean up that mess of personals and a tack launcher over here I'm gonna begin launching at the eco good no tack defense he's actually going to be able to do some damage over there that sucks that hurts at 43 minutes to be losing mass extractors on this scale to a single tack launcher that is a bit of a pain, not something you want to have happening. ACU is launching tax as well towards the southern side. 
I suppose fair is fair. That is blow for blow retaliation exactly the same in a mirror. Oh, Nathas. We have Tech 2 Bombers online. Don't know how I missed that cloud, but luckily they haven't done anything incredibly important. There is a SAM launcher online. Actually, three of them. That is going to give Mr. Aesthetic pretty much invulnerability to Tech 2 Bombers. Thank goodness for the area of effect on Sam's. And there's what I've been waiting for, the chicken. TA for life got the reclaim field. Let's go ahead and take a peek. Mr. Aesthetic has 23k reclaim and TA has 82. So astronomical difference in the reclaim between these two players. Is there enough Percivals to deny this Yathatha? I think not. The area of effect is going to miss on that one and Percival's moving around not going to really get any damage laid down on that and we've only got a few over here but we do have units on this side as well Percival's are going to have to collect together and do their best to hit that Yathotha at the same time we do have a strap bomber in ASF online for Mr. Aesthetic so that is going to be able to lay down some damage on the Yathotha but I don't think he has enough at the moment to kill it and there is no defense on the left side. Well, yes, there is. There's a tech one point defense and there's only Selens. I was thinking that those were other units. Chicken is going to retreat. Saw that group of Percivals coming. And he is going to circle back around the north. Strat Bomber is going to keep laying damage down on it. Just to lower that health just a little bit. And we've got a fat boy going up over here. That is going to be interesting. We have to see how that works out. You know how strong fat boys are when you front... Uh, front them with Percivals. Percivals are basically T3.5. They are the UEF direct fire experimental that no one wants to admit exists and they do brilliantly when paired with a fat boy for rear support. No nukes as of yet and those are the only two T4s. Honestly I did not expect this game to hit this stage. This is kind of impressive that it has gone on this long. Now you thought this down to 47k. Percival's were extended to the left. TA should have gone for the kill right there. He could have killed that ACU very easily. And he did not. T3 mobile artillery coming down now. It's going to start laying down some fire on these NGs that are trying to reclaim this field. Percival's grouping again. Oh, fat boy needs to come online. Don't extend the Percivals. They're going to start taking artillery fire for no reason. Mr. Aesthetic, don't dismiss yourself yet. You do have a chance, actually. If you can get a couple of Tech 3 mobile anti-air online, that fat boy's online. Now you're going to be able to clean up. And you've got all of those Percivals. I really think that uh, Mr. Aesthetic could push through this if he microed correctly and built a good unit composition. He's just got to advance carefully, which is not what he's doing. He didn't keep his shield online. He needed to balance his power. And he's actually gonna kill this. Holy cow, that was embarrassing. TA completely failing to utilize that Yathatha. He could have killed that fat boy 10 times over with that chicken, but he did not. And no, don't run your Percivals into the lightning. Don't. No. Bad. All right, good deal. All right, as long as he uses this fat boy effectively, he should be able to win this easily. There is nothing now between him and that base other than air. And he can deny air if he composes his units correctly. Well, he... He manages his unit composition correctly, but no, he's going to go out before he has proper support. He's got one Tech 3 mobile anti-air. He's going to push back through his Percivals in a full retreat. Strap Bomber's coming around again, trying to micro around them, but the Fat Boy is too big and too slow to micro, so he's going to lose it, but he still has the Percivals. Problem is, with all of these Strap Bombers, he's not going to be able... Yeah... Strap Bombers are going to melt the Percivals down. That is sad. Oh, so sad to see. I hate that for him. If he would have just waited until he could get maybe a dozen T2 flak and four or five 
This group of T3 mobile anti-air and about a dozen flak before he pushed forward with that attack group, and I think he could have easily, easily hammered into TA's base and done a whole lot of damage. But now he has a major problem because TA for life is going to get all of this reclaim again. This is the running theme that we've seen here. Mr. Aesthetic on 44k. TA on 113,000 reclaim. So this is the time when you see the ranking difference. TA does have Mr. Aesthetic by about 200 rank. And that is what you see in the higher level of gameplay is strategically picking your battles and your voice breaks so that you can claim the reclaim for yourself and that is the key to turning out a bigger army than the other guy has and you see ta is about the same in eco as mr aesthetic and uh he is doing pretty well on his mass extractor upgrades but he's not really caring so much about that as he is the reclaim and the reclaim is what is putting him far far ahead of mr aesthetic mr aesthetic at this point needs to really think very very hard about his unit composition and he needs to exploit the strengths that the uef has at t3 and if he does that i i don't know he he's this game is looking more and more bleak Oh, that's not good. We have a nuke launcher online for TA. That means the five minute countdown to the end of the game has begun, but it's going to be more than five minutes because TA is mass stalling. All right, Fat Boy is online. Mr. Aesthetic is just going to chill out there under his shield as that Fat Boy moves up the firing through the canyon. Got to move up and. Oh, no! Killed all of that T3 mobile anti air with. Tech 3 mobile artillery. That was devilish of UTA. That was not very nice at all. He's now built up enough strap bombers to kill the ACU. So I think we're going to see the end of this game very, very soon. TA wants to launch the nuke, I think. He's waiting to kill the ACU till he has that nuke built. And it is building rather slowly at the moment because of the mass stall. He needs to pick and choose his priorities and get one of them done so we can get this over with. air control totally in his hands I think he is at this point toying with Mr. Aesthetic he has let's see how many strap bombers he has he has 17 and counting so yeah there is no way that anything on this map would survive a pass of strats strats nope not headed anywhere still circling for shame extending the game to this point and the strap bombers are attacking that is going to be the acu kill ta finally got tired of waiting aesthetic is out of here all right guys that is going to wrap up this game hopefully you can get some good tips out of this there was a lot of iffy and fail gameplay and some really good gameplay in this replay so hopefully you can pick and choose the gems out of it choose some things to imitate realize some mistakes that you were making in your game previously and correct them and this will be a good instructional experience great game on the part of ta for life and mr aesthetic just a little bit of sloping off towards the end i think mr aesthetic kind of he had a really fantastic early game and then just kind of started losing steam and i know ta for life is an excellent end game player and you kind of saw that strength come out as he just kept rolling and rolling and rolling harder as the game went on Alrighty guys, that is going to wrap it up for me. I am out of here. There will be one more cast for the week tomorrow, and I hope you guys enjoyed this game as much as I did. As always, thank you so much for watching.